Hi, I'm Kor. And I'm Shabu. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Chainsaw Man episode and uh, talking a bit about the soundtrack as we go through. All right, let's get into it. It's very uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, I never, I didn't hear the like plonky noise the first time I watched it. That part's really cool. Uh, that part is cool. I, I have the most like minor gripe with it. <laughs> and it's because it introduces two elements, right? So it has this like mm -hmm. one building element and then it has the kind of like uh, bubbly or like staticky. It's like kind of popping and that's building as well. What bothers me is that like its entrance is great like when the hand kind of comes into frame it starts creeping up but it yeah. cuts out before the other part cuts out so there's like a double cut but it's like a very hard cut scene and I, yeah it like <laughs> mildly it's it's great it's it's great yeah. by the way and i have like nothing but praise for the rest of the show and the sound <laughs> uh, sound direction everything like legitimately nothing but this was the only part of the episode i feel like it's doing something that's like that section is already it's like kind of a normal cue of like the building tension then hard cut but there's like some interesting stuff going on that's like kind of different it's like a really small section but they have like what sounds like bowed piano string uh to me because there's all those like overtones mm. like the wispy frequencies like super high frequencies and stuff yeah. they're all like conflicting and then there's like two really subtle struck piano notes in there like yeah. very they're really like nestled in there Dude. and then like this sudden clicky rhythmic sound a bit of spoilers because i noticed it as i was watching the episode earlier and like taking notes but it's the sound of the chainsaw it's the clicking like sound that the mm -hmm. chainsaw makes and like made like way louder, which is a pretty cool touch, I think. If that's accurate. That is so sick. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, I was like, when I noticed it, I was like, wait, that can't, is it? And, but I'm pretty sure it is because it just seems so intentional because it is such a kind of weird sound to put there. Yeah. Dude, I was, I was in way too much like music director brain, I guess, and not like, composer <laughs> brain. Because I, the the only shit that I I kind of noticed and wrote was like, all right, the cut here, and then like <laughs> I think most shows would have would have like contrasting piece like right after to really mm -hmm. show the tension and then have it have it like go to another spot. And it's a really common thing in yeah. horror is to start off with this establishing shot and like build and. And then you have the like the everyday life music kind of play, but yeah. it's kind of creepy. And I think like not doing that shows a decent amount of restraint. I think um, I will say I think there's a reason for this, which I did pick up. Mm -hmm. And I I you maybe didn't pick up on this and I'm going to leave it a secret until we get into it <laughs> a bit later. I think it's pretty freaking interesting in terms of when they used music and when they decided to not use music. I think there's actually a... Um, a, a theme to when they chose to and not to. Sounds like someone's rolling marbles on the floor. Yeah, it, it kind of <laughs> sounds like um, the roar of a, uh, a tunnel. I don't think there's a whole lot to say here. I think it's kind of filling space. Like if this were, mm -hmm. if I were like doing, doing music direction on this, it's kind of a classic ambient drone-like synth that sounds yeah. kind of like wind. Um, the first time I watched this just like for fun on my own, um, which sorry, I watched this before <laughs> we decided to do this, but like just for, just for fun, I, I don't think I even registered that this cue was in the show, but it's basically used to like have something in the background and to help establish mood, mm -hmm. but doesn't like give too much away, which again, given that, um, I think that there's specific points where music is playing, like specific things are happening when music plays. Yeah. Um, that's pretty important. But it's clear that they like wanted to have sound. Um, and they wanted some kind of space being filled up behind uh Denji like talking and, and all that. So Yeah. Uh and I think it's that's really... what I was thinking. Uh Sorry. where it seems a bit more it's like almost seems more like 
sound design than necessarily something I'd consider to be like a element of music. But there is something kind of musical about the way that it's used. If Ushio wasn't like mm-hmm. so in the trenches with like electronic music and stuff, I would even maybe say that like the sound design team would have written something like this. But I've definitely heard other anime even like not just like media but other anime like i know maiden abyss has um two or three tracks that are just kind of different white noise and it's really useful Mm -hmm. to have because you're like okay i want to fill space i don't want to like have too much foley or or sound design going on but we want to fill space a bit it's really useful to have something that's so simple um and it can take the shape of anything from this like kind of white noise to a ambient drone uh, of like one note or something uh but yeah very very useful i mean i think it, this definitely sets some of the groundwork for uh how much of the soundtrack is all about the textures because that's what yeah. we'll be i think seeing a lot of as we go on mm. this part's so interesting <laughs> yeah, dude it's so freaking unhinged i love it that's a really short section but the stark contrast between like that introduction with like the wispy really high pitch it's like a choral sound and then right into this break core and then from that there's like another cut into like this sound of like machinery yeah it like yeah. really it's is hammering industrial. home the unnaturalness yes. yeah yes and i love that in the score so far is that there are scenes that are more natural and scenes that are Mm -hmm. a lot more industrial and then scenes that are a little bit kind of in the middle one thing that i love about the very beginning that kind of white noise or i usually say kind of choral uh build up into the the kind of like break core ish thing yeah (laughs) uh, is that it transitions really well from the white noise cue we heard earlier Mm -hmm. into that you could almost like make an argument for it being continuous but there's a pretty clear gap of like two or three seconds between the last cue and this one but i think that that was really clever on the uh on the direction side of things it's also like a really neat trick it being kind of tonally congruent or whatever because this like build up into the break core builds suspense Mm -hmm. and relieves it super quickly and then the frantic frantic like agitated beat lets the viewer infer the battle that happens without having to show it because later on then they get to like go full hype like yeah ape shit you know and and won't it's, have ruined any of the the hype yeah. by showing a fight earlier it gives you a bit of taste of what's to come but without like spoiling the whole affair what's that so one thing that i really really like about the sound direction in this show is like we looked mm-hmm. we've looked at another show that has kind of more absence in the music which is summertime render which is also amazing but what i love about this show is that it's like really subdued the kind of horror elements are a bit more muted everything's a little bit more subdued whereas summertime render it's a little bit more in your face and i think both are fantastic by the way i'm not dissing either one (laughs) um but the foley like really has to pick up the slack in both cases like the sound and foley have to pick up the slack because there's no music right if you listen with headphones on and you listen very carefully then It's got such like a subdued touch. Everything is accounted for. The rustling of the clothes, the wind, a car driving Mm -hmm. by, like Doppler effect and all. None of this is new. Like this happens in most shows, but it takes a very deft hand to handle it all like so subtly. It's really interesting though, like comparing this to Summertime Render. Neither is better. Um, I really like the sound direction in both a ton, but the more Mm -hmm. muted undertones of horror are like better accentuated and and the kind of like under the surface of this first episode is a lot better with the the kind of subtler sound direction touches yeah really a nice. lot of the small touches are yeah. present here i do really like that like the mm. wobble of the low yeah. really low bass it's so good this is boat piano too isn't it yeah i'm pretty sure that explains a lot of it yeah i just like you you can hear like little things like the way the mm. the it's being pulled but it doesn't always yeah. pull perfectly so there's bits of like pauses or parts where it gets a little louder or quieter yeah. from not 
having a perfect draw on the string. It's, the, the imperfection gives it so much life. And this is a cool part. We have like this theme. And then also there's another element, which is we finally get a bit of like strings that aren't just the piano. <laughs> There's like a really tiny bit of like super high piano in the mm -hmm. upper register. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like just floating there, just barely. That's such a good time to end it too. It's so good. I just like, I have to get this out of my system because the, the sound direction or the music direction is like, it's very by the book in that like you, you start here, you cut here for max emotional effect, right? But damn, that they, they do it well. <laughs> yeah, like it's so good. But um, I love this piece. Like it, it again. It's like something I would write. At least the base of it. It's it's dark. Mm -hmm. It's broody, but has like very. It has like a plenty of very subtle motion with ebbing and flowing with the imperfections in the bowing of the of the strings and everything. You could write this bass super quickly. You could just like sit down and chunk out like some chords, right? But the thing you'd spend more time on is putting on those more minute touches and making sure the soundscapes are all like even, you know, and that they yeah. even out perfectly. Uh, and this is where we really see Ushio's comfort with like all of their synths and different soundscapes that they like to use, like the, the prepared mm -hmm. piano. And I feel like there's a lot of prepared piano in this piece. And, and it's just obvious that like Ushio has mastered the instruments that they like to use. Yeah. Know? I love that at like 753 uh, is when the music editor or director or whatever decides to bring in um, the kind of ambient top line that it really sells that the creature, you know, that, that Pochita is like wounded and is desperate and kind of mm -hmm. plays on Denji's empathy. Uh, it's like perfectly melancholic with its simple melody. Like, I just love that muted mallet-like timbre. Um, and I love how it builds then cuts when the devil actually like takes a bite. Uh, it doesn't overstay its welcome. That theme, that like main melody doesn't overstay its welcome and it's mm -hmm. perfect to cue you in for some shit that's going to happen later. Um, they could have easily decided to repeat until the end of the flashback to really kind of wallow in that melancholy, but they instead have the restraint to only highlight that specific scene. And I think that that is one of the like main words that I would use for Chainsaw Man's first episode in terms of music direction mm -hmm. is restraint. And what I love about this restraint, which I kind of alluded to earlier, uh, it makes my job easier. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It allows the music team to abandon that restraint at the right time for full effect. Uh, yeah. If you're already in a cold pool, someone dumps cold water on you, you won't really feel it. But if you're in a jacuzzi and someone dumps cold water on, on you, then elicit a crazy response. Um, yeah, no, for yeah, sure. So I think that that's really, really cool. It's a great piece. I think this is probably like one of the most interesting pieces that we've heard so far in the soundtrack. Especially there's a lot of like very small things going on. Like the more you listen to it like the closer you listen to it the more like little things happening you can sort of pick up that are very very not noticeable initially yeah. dude it's got just so like many lots little of tiny touches. little yeah textural elements uh and i think that's like the key pack the key thing to note with this particular piece is it is almost entirely texture it's like mostly timbre yes. There's not a lot of melodic information to get attached to, except for this one little theme uh, that plays pretty briefly and which kind of represents seemingly his relationship with Pochita. I think maybe it was written in a way that that's like something that could be enabled or disabled because of the way that it, the timing of it yeah. ending, it ends with that very like common like stop with vibrato not vibrato with uh reverb yeah. which is a common way to like cut things off and it ends right when pochita bites down like the timing is perfect a little too that's, perfect yeah. for if we're just a part of the piece <laughs> yeah so that's uh, also kind of interesting it leads me to think that it's probably they are using stems because not every show uses mm -hmm. multiple stems and stems are um when the composer sends over like 
different sections or the recording team, whoever, whoever has the stems, it's like strings, percussion, piano, you know, the different recordings. And then that really helps the music director because then they can just have like one of those just explaining for people that don't aren't yeah. necessarily familiar. I think I can reveal what I was talking about earlier, which is if you notice when music plays, it's only like when he's having a flashback or when there's a devil around. Huh. It definitely seems like it's like moments of connection or opposition is like yeah. another way I might put it. It's an interesting point of like pitting them against each other. I love that. That reversed sort of sound is so interesting. Yeah. It's, it's got that like feedback loop sound. Listen for how it gets harsher as the devil gets revealed. I love how after that it just kind of ebbs in and out. And the way that like the character changes slowly is really cool. Yeah. We talked about the natural versus industrial. This is definitely industrial. Yeah. And there's also just like full on noise, too. Yeah. This part is so clean. That, that's such a good transition. I love that trick of like hiding a, a transition behind a, behind a sound effect. <laughs> Uh, also, that synth right there, like at the end, is so weird sounding. I love it. It's so good. <laughs> that's another piece that's like very much the the finer details make it. Because for a lot of these, I would you know to pull back the curtains a little bit. Um, you could write something very similar. I don't know if this is what Ushio did, but there are patches that have like loops. Uh, like that one that. There's a patch that has a lot of really industrial sound loops and it's very similar. You can achieve those things, but the the impressive part of it is a, uh, the impressive part of it comes from the layering uh, and the the like finer details of it and bringing in certain elements and, and shit like that. So while there are parts that you could theoretically mm -hmm. do with like one note and a mod wheel, um, it's really about how you use that stuff and how you combine it with each other and all that. So yeah it's not to say that it's not a great piece of music and it ushio legitimately could have just built these synths like ushio is does that like often <laughs> one of the interesting things about this section is uh how it's structured because from what my ear is telling me it's three separate pieces yep. uh that are very very carefully married together uh and they basically use like key moments to hide each transition it's like the moment where he sees the reveal and then starts running that's mm -hmm. they use that to transition into the next section so there's a slight change of you know the pace of the mood and everything it's very subtle because you're still in the same place but there's a bit of a build intention and then from when he gets cut they use like that very harsh loud sound effect that like sort of clears the sound like scape for you to introduce like something different as well. So it's like both times are like when I first watched it, I didn't really pick up on the fact that mm -hmm. any music was changing, which is exactly what you want to accomplish if you're if you're, you know, doing this. Yeah, it's so good. It's so good. I, I love the 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 music <laughs> direction has been like awesome. And the way uh, the uh the cut ins and cutouts are at like again very kind of by the book cut-ins and cutouts but like they're to the frame they're like perfect they are similar to what i think most most sound directors would probably kind of have an inclination towards um i think some sound directors would use a little bit more music i think that would be a mistake but the cut-ins and cutouts are amazing what I, another thing i love about this piece and it's one thing that I've, I love about like Ushio and certain composers um, is like the writing is so malleable. Like you could repeat mm -hmm. that for as long as you want, which is really helpful here yeah. because they want to have the buildup. Like, you know, that that harsh buildup when the devil is revealed. Right. And it's got that and it gets really harsh. You could have you could have the part before that be as long as you want. 
because you could just repeat yeah and, and then have the build up line up perfectly every time right um like obviously rhythm permitting but it it the way that it's written is super super sick because it allows for incredibly creative editing and uh tools like that obviously i don't know if any of it was written during production or whatever um mm-hmm. but just going based on how most tv shows work and um, most anime work not all anime but most anime uh music's written beforehand uh it's written in in such a way that it's very easily usable and like repeatable mm-hmm. and it allows for all of these really really cool moments that you would see in like a film if it was actually scored to picture another part of them like music here that i think is pretty cool in the first two pieces that are in this section they both have that kind of heartbeat the like scott scottish snap rhythm the da da uh yeah. that has like that sense of a heartbeat which is used a lot and it's really effective for tense moments moments where you know the character's running because it gives a sort of musical analog for uh how the character is feeling in a moment of tension uh, and I think one of the cool things is that it's present in two different ways in those first two parts. Because in the first one, it's like da 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 da. Uh, there's like a slight syncopation, and then mm-hmm. in the other one, it's like da 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 da. Like it's like right mm-hmm. after the beat comes. So it's like even though they're different from each other, there's that point of like connection, which I think also helps marry the transition between them uh and like i think throughout these one of the interesting things is even though the textures and timbre varies so much the rhythm stays super firmly in in place like the rhythm of the tracks is always very like locked and uh like sort of droning constantly hammering in uh which i think again has that sort of effect of the antagonist that he's facing these the sense of danger and stuff that's constantly impending this is such a fascinatingly strange all of ushio's past work has culminated into this piece i feel i can hear a little bit of everything Look how many sounds there are yeah and you can sort of hear it slowly adding on the layers a lot of pitch variation between notes very in motion you know with while still being a kind of relatively low tempo i really <laughs> love the atmosphere of this piece um and I, I kind of alluded to this earlier but it really reminds me of ushio's style and like devil man and liz kind of combined together Mm-hmm. I think the great thing with this choice is how it kind of calls back to the scene with meeting Pochita earlier. This time it has way more motion and elements showing the growth of their relationship and mm-hmm. as it like fades um, and Pochita patches up Denji, it also fades, you know. It's really yeah. a really beautiful little uh, sub, sub, subliminal, sub, subconscious subliminal <laughs> trick. Um the composition itself is really lovely. It's so melancholic. It's very muted and plonky, but it like fills up space and the thinness of the rhythm section really aids the piece um, in that like mm-hmm. melancholic dreamlike atmosphere. Uh, there's nothing too grounding. And then when you get to the heartbeat, the heartbeat is what kind of sounds like the real thing. You know, that yeah. sounds like the thing that's kind of grounded in reality where the music is very, it's very a part of the, uh, the flashback and like very dreamy and ethereal i love that i think this again calls back to it seems uh like something that ushio really likes to do uh especially on this score in particular which is having this very textured background uh and then putting just a very very simple melodic like shape on top like it's just do 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 it's like very it, there's not like yeah. a lot of insane movement going on or anything it's very staccato short easy to read 
uh, and it sort of just floats on top of this this canvas that has been created by all these different sounds um it's it's very fascinating because it's pretty different from i think the way a lot of people consider composition in the case of like mm. you create you know your general you have your chords and your harmony in the background yeah and then you have your melody and then your counter melody yeah no none of that no that's <laughs> that's not how this is working dude uh, it's a very different approach, but it's pretty pretty interesting. Ushio, my kind of composer. I can't write <laughs> melody for shit, dude. <laughs> I'm a I'm a texture person through and through. I actually do love the melodies in this. Just to just to like say that, because I know mm -hmm. we've said it, but like the melodies are so simple, but they're perfect. Kizugo. Dude, the callback. <laughs> oh, it hurts. <laughs> I feel like this is kind of interesting because this is like the first time we hear a sound that sounds like this. Dude, I love those little like electric guitar. Like, I, I believe it's when you push the pick on the string. Like, instead of strumming, you like push it. Yeah. And it's got that kind of tink, tinky noise. That's a classic. I don't know what uh, some other people in the industry would call it, but one thing that you would call it is a break. Um, I could probably talk for an hour <laughs> just this cue, but um, a break, like, I love the direction because, um, <laughs> like, there are tried and true tricks that you do, uh, and one of those is a break where mm -hmm. it either, like, fades out or cuts all of the major in-your-face instruments right before a really impactful action happens on screen. For here, they do it a little bit early to hit the flashback and give the moment some really great buildup, but the part that they actually do the break for is when Denji pulls the cord, right? Other properties, or like properties, I mean, um, like shows or media, other media would probably have a moment and then jump straight into the hype track, uh, but Chainsaw Man, is, as we see after this is okay to ruminate in it for a second and let yeah. that hype build. Um, one of the perks of your audience already kind of having at least an inkling <laughs> of what's going to happen uh, is that you can kind of get away with this. A good example of something great that goes straight into the next track would be like uh, Hersher of the Void from Honkai. If you want something to compare uh, that handles a break very, very differently, but also mm -hmm. just as masterfully uh, two really, really great breaks. Um, really, really cool technique. But yeah, I just wanted to point that out. Something interesting here is it seems like in order to convey the more uh, like genuine relationship that he has with Pochita, uh, there's more... I, I hate to put it in this way, but this track is like the most normal track in the soundtrack. Like it, it follows the beats of what I think of when I think of like a soundtrack mm -hmm. the most closely. Uh, I guess there's some other pieces that are a bit more uh, sort of standard as you might expect. Mm -hmm. uh, but this track in particular has a lot more of that element of clear harmony in the background there's these building like sort of rhythmic pattern with the electric piano and then a return of this theme in the piano again Dude. so it has all those little tastes and the the orchestra as well which we haven't seen a lot of the strings but they always seem to come in in those moments of like genuine connection and like intimacy they're not really used outside of those contexts. So they have like even stronger of an association with that, I think. Yeah. And this kind of ties into, you know, I've been talking about these different music director kind of points. Um, mm -hmm. This is the most human we've heard so far. There is one <laughs> more piece in the, in the, in the episode that is a hair more human um, or, you know, human. I, I say that because it's more, natural than industrial which i feel like is yeah. a really big split in this in there's this more like identi identifiable musical elements yeah exactly 
it's such a fascinating piece like it just, like especially for choice and it just like mm. hits like a truck because it's you know obviously we talked about this but to just blatantly put it out there i think it is a variant of the cue from when denji and pochita first met it has the same swelling, undulating, muted synth strings. Uh, it might be in a different key. I feel like it's probably the same harmonic motion, but uh, I haven't had mm -hmm. a chance to check. The blocky kind of rhythmic electric piano as a texture is so good in this context. And that electric guitar in the background, like, ugh, dude. The real kicker to me, though, which you touched on, you talked about, is the strings. It's like they're mm -hmm. so thin and there's tons of reverb. And it's all in the higher register. And it yeah. gives it that perfect, like, cold, hollow, melancholic feeling. And then it all washes out into that bell synth or, like, Celeste-sounding instrument. It is, like, a perfect send-off to our new friend. I know why they needed to do the break. I wrote, oh, I know why they did it this way. They <laughs> needed the silence and the build so that the audience could hear the chainsaw fade in. Oh, that's why they needed to do the break exactly the way they did. Because if you if you like play it from inside the zombies or whatever, you can hear the the chainsaw kind of crescendo in. So that's why they had to do the break yeah. the way that they did, and without going straight into another piece, because they have to they have to have the chainsaw. You have to be able to hear the chainsaw. It's she chainsaw. Is the man. chainsaw man after all. <laughs> This is like, it's like a superhero theme. I know, dude. I love this vamp, because you can just repeat it forever, man. And then you've got the built-in transition with the, uh, that's, that's done by sliding the pick on the string. Dude, do you know what's really interesting? I think that, like, in terms of the, the, uh, heart-pounding frenetic action, the drums are actually doing a majority of the heavy lifting. Yeah, no, the actual like melody is pretty simple. At least at, at this point, like this point with the, with the higher guitar, like the hype comes in from the guitar uh, earlier on. It's like it's all drums. I love that the the rhythm section thins out here. Yeah, so that you like really focus on the sound. Well, this is the cool part because like the song is ending, but you don't notice. Because the chainsaw, the sound of the chainsaw completely dominates. It's like, oh, the song's over? I didn't even notice it ended. Where did it end? I don't remember. Yeah, I just, I, I love that little touch of like, as he kills the devil, um, the rhythm section thins out and it lets the, the really visceral sound design shine through and lead to exactly what you were talking about. The The timing on the ending is, is perfect as always. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to expect that that will be a thing with this show is that it's going to have like perfectly timed cues which is not something that you should take for granted it's also we see again like you were mentioning got a like a section that you could very easily just keep looping uh mm -hmm. if you needed to extend for however long a scene needs to be uh and to time things out uh and i i'm pretty sure that is what they did because again there's like a moment where the music they they have like the section that sort of repeats and then there's like this i don't know what the correct terminology is but like they go crazy for a second like there's a bit of like a riff like they mm -hmm. get like scratchy and stuff on the yeah, guitar that's... and then it goes into the building like section where it gets even more intense mm -hmm. so there's like a bit of a transitional section that you can use to go from that looping space into whatever the next beat is yeah i love that vamp at the beginning I want to work with Ushio, dude. <laughs> it's it seems so not easy, obviously, but like it seems, it seems very easy to work with, like in terms of uh, in terms of you using the music that uh, that he writes. Yeah, there's a lot of credit due to, like obviously the music director, uh, but and like the music editor, but then also Ushio is giving them yeah a lot to work with, like he's yeah. making their jobs easy so they can go the extra mile in making it everything work really well so this is just like a general thing mm -hmm. but the less time you have to spend messing with a piece of music to make it fit the more time you can spend um fine-tuning it and making it fit yeah. the uh the show better i am a huge champion of sound 
sound directors, music directors, music editors, this does feel like Ushio is doing a lot of work though. Like, <laughs> like you know, it's Ushio is killing it. This is like even more of the noise. Yeah, this is, I love, it's so much more demented. It's more muted. It's less melodic. The sounds are more traditionally like scary, more industrial. So I think the interesting contrast, because we have like this just straight up rock song. It's like, it's like his theme song comes in when he initially transforms. But as we see the darker side of his sanity, then you get a track that's more, more in, uh, in line with that. Yeah. And this is the most natural thing we've heard. <laughs> and we get some strings too. Mm hmm. And whatever that sound is. I love that it sounds like more idealized. Like, and it's clearer too. Like, it's way less muted. Everything's a bit sharper. It's more like clear. Um, mm -hmm. I think Denji is hopeful and the music sounds like it. You know? Yeah. It doesn't stray away from the main sound and it actually might be the same harmonic motion again have not checked don't quote me on that um <laughs> as the pochita tracks but uh it retains its dreamy washed out sound without like giving up the clarity because i think that the clarity is really yeah. important in this it's a really beautiful piece to end the first episode with the observation that i take away from this last track that i think is sort of applicable to a lot of the soundtrack especially in these more sort of muted or naturalistic moments a lot of the ones focused on piano or like bowed piano um is that a lot of the melodic content floats around like a very small constrained area mm -hmm. like you hear a lot of these melodies it like the melody here is like da 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 like there's not a lot of movement in like the broader scale of pitch but each individual element of the piece is super wide in the frequency range. Yeah. Like there's all this, this huge range from like very, very low notes to very high notes and especially high notes. Ushio really likes those sort of wispy, airy, high uh, frequencies. Mm -hmm. um, but all of these individual elements tend to stay pretty closely within their space so nothing's ever like getting in the way of each other. Uh, yeah. They're all sort of staying <laughs> within their lane, so yeah. to speak. They're all like in their own frequency ranges. It's yeah. like it actually kind of the chill tracks. Now that we've seen all of them actually kind of remind me of the piece. Girls, girls dance staircases from Liz and the Bluebird. Which she also mm. worked on a lot of the tracks from Liz actually would work <laughs> if you just like threw a shelf on them. And then like got that more muted tone but uh <laughs> there's a lot of uh prepared piano in mm -hmm. liz as well so you can definitely hear the through line between ushio's interests as a composer yeah. we got a lot more of those really chill ambient pieces than i thought we would and um i think it really aids the mappa visual style super well right. which i know some people were a little a little nervous about but um i think that it adds to that really kind of dreamy washed out quality uh really really well i think it's i think it's great and then yeah. the sound direction sound direction is top notch it's it's absolutely yeah, indeed. incredible as someone that has only seen the anime uh and hasn't read the manga um i've heard that there is a lot more um a lot more like dark comedy as mm -hmm. it progresses and it gets like more and more absurd as it goes on so i'm pretty interested to hear what Ushio has written for that kind of, uh, those like kind of different tones, uh, That'll because be this opening is a bit, you know, it, it sort of eases you in. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's much more sort of heartfelt and muted. And, uh, I'm curious how it will come across as the story really ramps up because I know, 
uh or at least i've heard that chainsaw man gets pretty insane yeah the first thing i wrote was i wonder if we'll get more music in later episodes it definitely adds yeah. the atmosphere and almost instills that like drab feeling the like still feeling of denji's life and i think that that might be what they were going for and so when denji's life changes they might add in more music that's my yeah working theory right now we'll see in literally like however many days <laughs> but uh we'll see if that's true or not but yeah the, let the, us know in the comments if we're completely know. wrong <laughs> <laughs> but like it really felt to me like any time it was focused on denji's life like as it is mm -hmm. currently in the first episode there was no music and anytime there was music it was literally just like that white noise and then the only time there was music was when he's reminiscing so like the two flashbacks when he's fighting devils and mm -hmm. when his life changes uh and i'm really really curious to see if we get more music in the upcoming episodes when denji's life changes i think i think we might but i'm ready to eat my words too <laughs> well i think that about does it for this video thank you all so much for watching trying out a bit of a different format so let us know what you think and if you'd like us to do this with anything else that's all for today we'll see you guys in the next one thanks guys peace out why did i double peace bro what a double peace <laughs> peace, I was out. Peace, out. I double peace at the end bro